are back. If you're confused and you expect to see Steve Malzberg sitting in the chair, he's not here. I'm Rick Unger filling in for Steve today here on the Steve Mal Malzberg Show. And joining me for this segment, Carrie Sheffield, my co-Forbes contributor and a fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Carrie, welcome. Hi, good to hear, be here, Rick. So you wrote what I thought was a fascinating article a few days ago over at Forbes, where you talked about the fact that Governor Christie's problems as he heads into 2016 may have a lot less to do with bridges and a lot more to do with pension funds. What's going on over there in New Jersey? Well, they're having a lot of financial trouble. And as you said, you know, people are focusing on the Bridgegate scandal, and that seems to be dying down. It looks like he's going to be exonerated. And I frankly think the bigger story here is the fact that New Jersey has had six downgrades since he took office and from all three rating agencies. In full disclosure, I used to rate bonds at Moody's Investor Service. Right. Moody's has downgraded him twice. So he's rated the pension funds. He's um, creating these unrealistic budget assumptions. So he's just really not governing well. Now, according to Governor Christie, he's not the problem. The problem are the rating services that he seems to feel are, feel are treating him unfairly. Are other states being treated unfairly? Well, everyone's treated with the same yardstick, and there are some technical reasons that I talk about in the article about why he's wrong in terms of, you know, doing that ad hominem attack, which is classic Chris Christie, yeah. let's be honest. Um, but even in a relative sense, if you look at the general fund balance of New Jersey compared to his peers, leave aside the credit rating agencies. New Jersey, looking at your peers, their fund balance has been going down while everybody else's credit balance or fund balance has been going up. So as the economy has been improving, other states are seeing a better situation, right. a brighter situation, but yet there's New Jersey and they're going in the wrong direction. Right. I, I would presume that a lot of this, if not most of this, has to do with the, the state's obligation to fund their uh, their state pension fund. Is that the tr is that correct? It is. It is. So their fixed costs, their pensions, and their debt obligations are growing to be a larger proportion of their budget, and that eats into their ability to complete their budget. Um, and so, so what Chris Christie is doing is raiding the pension fund and essentially stealing from the future. And you know that's that's really causing problems, and the rating agencies are taking notice. Interesting. Now let's let's turn to the policy politics of this situation. I know you write a great deal about politics also. How much damage do you think this kind of a problem does to a governor when he wants to be president? Do you think your average American actually notices, cares, gets it? Well, I mean, we had the, you know, the a historic downgrade of United States debt under Barack Obama, and most Americans didn't seem to notice that much. Right. Um, but when you're talking about all three rating agencies and you're having multiple downgrades, I think that says a lot, uh, especially when it's, it seems to be an outlier relative to other states. Um, so, I mean, I, I think the technical details, fund balances, ratios, and all that, the average American doesn't really care. Um, but I think it speaks to a broader question, and that is, does Christie actually care about governing, or does he actually just care about doing dog and pony shows and yelling at teachers? Well, how far how far does this go? I mean, I can recall when I was living in California not that many years ago, things got so bad uh, with the state financing that bankruptcy was a real discussion. Whether or not mm -hmm. it was going to happen or not, it, it ultimately didn't, and I don't think it could legally. It, it wasn't the issue. The fact is, we were all talking about it. Are we nearing a point where we're going to hear people in New Jersey talking about potential bankruptcy? I don't think we're anywhere close to that level. I mean, we're not even close to the level of being below investment grade, um, and you'd have to be many levels below investment grade to start talking about bankruptcy. I mean, stranger things have happened. I don't think we're even close to that. Uh, in general, municipal bonds tend to be the most one of the most stable asset classes. Um, but in general, like I said, when we're talking about governors who are doing much stronger. So like Scott Walker in Wisconsin, for example, he's on, de on deck for an upgrade. Moody's just changed the outlook for his state to a positive, meaning mm -hmm. that they, are th they see the wind behind his back. Um, and he attributes a lot of that, and, and even the rating agencies attribute it as well, to the reforms that he put in place with the teachers unions. So I, it's probably fair to say, while this might make a decent uh, anti-Christie commercial in the <laughs> Republican primary, it's not gonna be the kind of collapse that could really knock him out. Well, I hope that people look at the hard questions. I hope that people are willing to look at the data uh, and not just look at the optics. 
um, and, and look at someone who can actually govern. This is just my personal so opinion. So we're running a bit short on time, but I really did want to ask you this. You know, we're going to switch next door from New Jersey to New York, where Senator Schumer uh, had some really unusual things to say about Obamacare this week. Right. Yeah, no, it was interesting. He was basically saying that Obamacare hurts the middle class. And if we actually wanted to help the middle class, we shouldn't have passed Obamacare. I just find it ironic since he voted for it. So well, he not only voted for it, he carried a lot of water for the administration on it as one of the leaders of the Senate. So it is a bit odd. What do you think he's up to? I, I have no idea. I mean, it could be that he's just trying to, you know, stir up his own populist crowd I, I don't understand I mean it could be it could be that he actually has the public's um, in, intent in mind I, I would like to hope that um, but you know I think you and I have talked about this before elsewhere um, the Affordable Care Act the way it's set up is to create a two-tiered system you're gonna have a very thin layer of people who can afford expensive pl Cadillac plans and then really low quality plans for everybody else so the middle class will get squeezed and get dumped into that plan uh, that is lower quality and you'll have a very few sort of we're gonna have a caste system within within our health care well I, I do think you know setting aside the merits uh, for or against uh, it is somewhat fascinating that Schumer would, would take this point of view now look uh, you, you're not going anywhere because you're gonna be staying with us for the panel so you'll stick around for a bit I'll be here excellent we're gonna be back with another Malzberg panel after the break uh, first did you know you can reduce your estate taxes by gifting from your estate I actually did know that. I wonder if you did too. Here to tell you about it, tax advisor Michael Daskal, who's going to give you a few good tips on how you can save some money on your estate taxes if you're ready to confront that particular tax scenario. We'll be right back. You're watching Max to Money. It's better to give than to receive, so they say. But when it comes to your taxes, giving or gifting could save you money down the road. The benefits of annual gifting is you get some money out of your estate systematically every year. You can give $14,000 to a child, or if you're married, you can give $28,000 per person. But more important than getting money out of your estate, I think it's important while you're young and healthy to help your kids, whether you can improve their lifestyle, help them with education, you can help them buy a new house, you can help them pay for health care, you can fund education for grandkids. Gifting to family members involves tough decisions about when, how, and in what form to gift. Before doing so, talk with your attorney and your accountant. I'm Karina Brez. Get more money news at newsmax.com.